There is no denying the fact that the globe is warming at an alarming rate, and the Caribbean remains one of the most vulnerable regions in the world. In 2017, unprecedented storms caused more than $10 billion in damage across the region. And that's at one degree of warming. The world is currently on a path to well over three degrees of warming by the time a child born today reaches old age, even if the countries meet the commitments made in the first round of the nationally determined contributions. Mia Motley, the Prime Minister of Barbados, was the only Caribbean head of government to address the Global Climate Action Summit in San Francisco. The summit brought together subnational governments and businesses from around the world to launch deeper worldwide commitments and actions that can put the globe on track to take actions against climate change and realize the historic Paris Agreement. For countries like Belize and Barbados, it is imperative that we pursue efforts to limit the temperature increase to 1.5 degrees Celsius. Studies show that the 0.5 degree difference between the 1.5 and the below 2 degrees Celsius as set forth in the Paris Agreement would mean a 10 centimeter higher global sea level rise by the start of the next century, longer heat waves and would result in virtually all tropical coral reefs being at risk. Belize is aligned more along the, the lines of the SIDS, the small island developing states. Um, and, and the main um, request, the main demand that SIDS are making is that we need to be more ambitious in reducing our commitment to cap emissions so that we maintain a global rise in temperature right, of only 1.5 degrees maximum. Um, there is some general discussion that we could allow 2 degrees but at the level of SIDS, we we're saying that we cannot allow, we cannot afford a two degrees increase in, in global temperatures because we're mostly low-lying states, we're, we're prone to inundation, we're prone to hurricanes. And at two degrees, the science has shown that the Caribbean SIDS at least and, and SIDS elsewhere are going to take a, a, very, a very hard and, and difficult road um, ahead if we go with two degrees versus 1.5. And so it's important that the rest of the world do its part, as well as to help vulnerable regions with limited adaptive capacity and high exposure. Prime Minister Motley used the GCAS platform to champion support for the Caribbean region, where she called on the rest of the world, including government, business and people. The world has lost, all of us, have lost momentum since Paris in 2015. And although the rate of increase has slowed, we have not yet peaked our global emissions, but we must do so by 2020. We really cannot afford to wait any longer. There is much work to be done. An affordable and predictable climate finance, believe you me, is greatly needed, especially for small island states whose vulnerability is in front of you today as I speak. The Green Climate Fund must be adequately replenished for it is our only hope in many instances and access to these funds need to be streamlined the agreements and goals that arose out of the week in paris cannot be forgotten or cast aside not anymore the next round of nationally determined contributions will seal our fate for better or for worse my friends my friends across the world, the time for talk is past. This is truly the time for action. Not just the action of leaders and governments, but the actions of you and you and you and you and you and me. Reporting for News 5, I'm Andrea Polanco.